Growing Up by Joyce Arthur Carey Joyce Carey was an Irish novelist and artist. He was one of the finest writers of the 20th century. His subject matter was usually based on the English society. Growing Up is one of the five short stories in the collection Spring Song and Other Stories. The main characters in this short story are Mr. Robert Quick, the father, and his two young daughters, Kate, 13 years old, and Jenny, 12 years old. The title at the very outset suggests the theme of growing up. Now, what happens when we move from childhood to adulthood? We undergo certain changes, right, physically, mentally, as well as emotionally. Now, the story is, in a very particular way, dealing with the emotional changes and the drastic change that happened between a father and his two daughters in just a matter of few years. As human beings, we reach a certain age, we think we are big enough, wise enough to do things on our own. Especially from 13 to 18, several changes especially emotional changes, takes place in us, right? So we try to act mature when in reality we are not as matured as we think. Now the childhood relationship between us and our parents starts to fade. We stop playing games with them. We stop listening to their stories and dislike when they treat us like kids. Now this happens to everyone. Now, the same thing happened to Mr. Quick's daughters. Now, let's read the story in detail. Robert Quick, coming home after a business trip, found a note from his wife. She would be back at four, but the children were in the garden. He tossed down his hat and, still in his dark business suit, which he disliked very much, made at once for the garden. In the opening paragraph, we are introduced to the main character, Mr. Robert Quick, who had just reached home after a business trip. As he entered the house, he found a note from his wife saying that she had gone out and would be back at four o'clock. She also told him in the note that the girls, their daughters, are in the garden. So he took off his hat and without removing his dark business suit, which he hated so much, he immediately rushed out to meet his daughters in the garden. He had missed his two girls and looked forward eagerly to their greeting. He had hoped indeed that they might, as often before, have been waiting at the corner of the road to flag the car and drive home with him. These lines tells us that he had missed his daughters a lot while he was away and was eagerly waiting for them to greet him like how they used to do in the previous years. When they were younger, they would wait for him at the corner of the road. They would hide behind a bush and as soon as they saw their father's car, they would signal him to stop and drive home with him. So this afternoon, he was expecting the same welcome from his girls. The Quick's garden was a wilderness, except for a small vegetable patch near the pond and one bed where Mrs. Quick grew flowers for the house. It had not been touched for years. Old apple trees tottered over seedy laurels and pruned roses. Tall ruins of dahlias and delphiniums hung from broken sticks. In this paragraph, we get a description of the Quick's garden. Now, this is a very important part, so let's listen. Now, what was the garden like? It was like a wilderness. It was like a jungle, except for a small vegetable patch near the pond and just one small flower bed where Mrs. Quick grew some flowers for the house. Now, even the flower bed that Mrs. Quick made was not touched for years. There were old apple trees falling here and there. The roses were unpruned. They were bushy. 
the dahlias and delphiniums were also broken. The original excuse for this neglect was that the garden was for the children. They should do what they liked there. The original truth was that neither of the quicks cared for gardening. Besides, Mrs. Quick was too busy with family council and parish affairs, Quick with his office, to give time to a hobby that bored them both. Now, what was the reason for the neglect? Why did they neglect their garden so much? The original excuse or the main excuse for the neglect was that the garden belonged to the children. While the truth was that neither of the Quicks cared for gardening, they were too busy with their own work. Mrs. Quick was too busy with family council and parish affairs, while Mr. Quick was also busy in his office, so they did not have time for a hobby like gardening. But the excuse had become true. The garden belonged to the children, and Quick was even proud of it. He would boast of his wild garden so different from any neighbor's shaved grass and combed beds. It has come to seem for him a triumph of imagination, and this afternoon, once more he found it charming in its wildness, an original masterpiece among gardens. The excuse that they made had eventually come true, and the garden really belonged to the children. Okay, Mr. and Mrs. Quick never spent time in their garden, so yeah, it belonged to the children. And Mr. Quick was very, very proud of his garden. He called it an original masterpiece among gardens. He said it is very different from any neighbor's shaved grass and combed beds. So he was proud of his garden. He would boast about his garden wherever he went. And... In fact, with the sun just warming up in mid-May, slanting steeply past the trees, making even old weeds shine red and gold, it had the special beauty of untouched woods, where there is still, even among closely farmed lands, a little piece of free nature left, a suggestion of the frontier primeval forest. Okay, he says, this particular day, it was even more beautiful. Even the old weeds were shining in colors of red and gold. He says his garden has a special beauty of untouched woods, and he even calls it a primitive forest. A bit of real wild country, thought Quick, a townsman for whom the country was a place for picnics, and he felt at once released, escaped. He shouted, Hello, hello, children. Okay, Mr. Quick, as we already know, was very proud of his garden. He said it was different from the, the neighbor's garden, right? And he also calls it a real beauty uh, with wild countryside. And he even says that it is a great spot for picnics. For Mr. Quick, his garden was like an escape from the city. So he loves it. Then he calls out for his children. There was no answer. Then he stopped in surprise. Then he thought, they've gone to meet me. I've missed them. And this gave him both pleasure and dismay. Okay, so as he called out for his daughters, uh, he got no reply. And he was surprised. Then he thought to himself, oh, they might have gone to meet me. But, you know, he was not so sure that they will do that. So he had mixed feelings. He was happy as well as sad. The last time the children had missed him, two years before, having gone a mile down the road and lain in ambush behind a hedge, there had been tears. They had resented being searched for and brought home. They had hated the humiliating failure of their surprise. In the past, when Mr. Quick comes home from work, both the girls used to wait for him down the road by hiding in the bush, and when they are caught by their father, they would be very disappointed and they would cry because their plan to surprise him would fail. Now this was how they used to enjoy playing with their father in the past, okay, two years ago. But even as he turned back towards the house, 
and dodged a tree. He caught sight of Jenny lying on her stomach by the pond with a book under her nose. Jenny was twelve and had lately taken furiously to reading. Since he did not see them, he was about to go back. Then suddenly he caught sight of Jenny, the younger of the two girls. She was lying on her stomach by the pond with a book under her nose. She was twelve and had recently cultivated the habit of reading. Quick made for the pond with long steps, calling, Hello, hello, Jenny, hello, waving. But Jenny merely turned her head slightly and peered at him through her hair. Then she dropped her cheek on the book as if to say, Excuse me, it's really too hot. Now Mr. Quick went towards the pond and waved at Jenny, but she barely looked at him. She just peeped between her hair to see who was waving at her, and then she turned away without even acknowledging him, as if to say, please don't disturb me, it's too hard. And now he saw Kate a year older. She was sitting on the swing, leaning sideways against the rope, with her head down apparently in deep thought. Her bare legs, blotched with mud, lay along the ground, one foot hooked over the other. Her whole air was one of a languor and concentration. To her father's hello, she answered only in a faint, muffled voice, Hello, Daddy. He now saw Kate, who was a year older than Jenny. She was sitting on a swing lazily and was in deep concentration. She was leaning sideways against a rope with her head down as if in a deep thought. She was not wearing any shoes. Her legs were muddy and one foot hooked over the other. She replied to her daddy's hello in a faint or in a soft muffled voice without even looking at him. What a disappointment to a father. Hello, Kate, but he said no more and did not go near. Quick never asked for affection from his girls. He despised fathers who flirted with their daughters, who encouraged them to love. It would have been especially wrong, he thought, with these two. They were naturally impulsive and affectionate. Jenny had moods of passionate devotion, especially in the last months. She was growing up, he thought more quickly than Kate, and she was going to be an exciting woman, strong in all her feelings, intelligent, reflective. Seeing Kate on the swing, Mr. Quick wanted to ask her what she was doing, or how her day was, maybe. But since he did not get a positive reply from her, he did not even dare go near. Here Mr. Quick says how he hated fathers who flirted or forced their children to love them back. He says it is their wish or it is their choice to do so. And especially, it would be a bad idea with these two girls as they were naturally impulsive and affectionate. And he, was, he also mentions how excited he is about their future. Well, Jenny, he said, what are you reading now? But the child answered only by a slight wriggle of her behind. Now, at the end of this page, again Mr. Quick tried to talk to Jenny, asking her what book she was reading. But she just made a slight movement or wriggle with her shoulders. Can you imagine the feelings of Mr. Quick? Quick was amused at his own disappointment. He said to himself, Children have no manners, but at least they're honest. They never pretend. He fetched himself a chair and the morning paper, which he had hardly looked at before his early start on the road. He would make the best of things. At fifty-two, Having lost most of his illusions, 
He was good at making the best of things. It's a lovely day, he thought, and I'm free till Sunday night. He looked around him as he opened the paper and felt again the pleasure of the garden. What a joy at last to be at peace, and mere presence of the children was a pleasure. Nothing could deprive of that. He was home again. Mr. Quick was feeling funny at his own disappointment. Now what was his disappointment? Getting the attention of the girls, right? Now he then was silently talking to himself, saying that children these days have no manners. They have no respect for parents, but at least they're honest. They don't pretend. Okay, they don't hide their feelings, he says. He then took a chair and a newspaper to read. Now that he is 52, he started being more serious with life. He tried to make the best use of his time. Then he complimented the weather as he was sitting in the garden. He said, It's a lovely day and the best thing is that I will be at home till Sunday night. He felt really pleased to be back home.